welcome. I am so honored to be here. You know, Dee mentioned that it's a little rainy and cold this morning. I want to begin today with a positive thought. I think when the temperature is this cold outside, the aging process stops. <laughs> look, at, look at this, it's a free day. <laughs> Dee mentioned that uh, I am from Danville and I went to junior high and high school here in Danville, but I, went, I was actually born in Cleveland, Ohio. Some people think that's the toughest handicap to have. <laughs> But uh, I, I love Danville, and, uh, I, uh, and I, I, I love this conference, this uh, Career and Leadership Summit. And it's, I know it's going to be a day of inspiration and information. I'm excited after my presentation, I get to sit in the audience and uh, learn right along with all of you. i, I, I got to tell you, Dean, you're absolutely right. Don is a marvelous speaker. And I've known Steve Rizzo for a long, long time. And you're, you're really in for it for a terrific, terrific day. And, and I really am just so, so thrilled to be here today. You know, Karen, you, you talked about Albert Schweitzer, and uh, I, I was thinking of another Albert Schweitzer quote that I think really sets the tone for today, and here it is. Albert Schweitzer says, you can, but will you? That's good, isn't it? You can, but will you? My youngest daughter is named Alexa. A few years ago, Alexa was head cheerleader, valedictorian, and class president in the third grade, and uh, <laughs> can I tell you, it's my kid. She comes in one day and she says, Daddy, Daddy, I'm so excited. I've already talked to my teacher. I want you to come and speak at my school during an assembly. Now, as I'm sure all of you can imagine, I am so touched that my precious little girl wants me to come and speak at her school. So we sit down and we start to talk. And I said, sweetie, do you realize that if I stand in front of all the boys and girls, they're going to know about your daddy's hands and about his legs. Now, sweetie, I just want to make sure that you feel comfortable with that. I'll never forget what she said. Daddy, you were born to be an inspirational speaker. <laughs> about touching my heart. I said, sweetie, gosh, you just made my day. Thank you so much for telling me that. And she said, well, yeah, Daddy. You got a peace sign in one hand and a thumbs up on the other. <laughs> As Dean mentioned in his introduction, I was born with a physical challenge. It affects me from the elbows down and from the knees down. I have three toes on my right foot and a partially developed lower right leg, and I was unable to walk until I was five years old. You know, I can remember as a young boy sitting outside of my parents' front porch, and I would watch all the other neighborhood children play outside. And I remember so desperately wanting to be just like them. Oh, I, I mean, I just dreamed that, that someday I'd have normal hands and, and normal legs, and of course there would be times that I would get discouraged and then I returned to my mom, the wisest person I know. Mom, why was I born this way? You know, why me? And she said, well, honey, it's because you're not a carbon copy. You're an original. <laughs> mom, why do kids tease me? She just said, well, honey, I... I guess that's just a weak person's imitation of strength. I had an audience member come to me and say, hey, Roger Crawford, I think Eleanor Roosevelt said that. I said, you know, I'm really shocked. It really catches me by surprise. You know, I know a little bit about Eleanor Roosevelt, former first lady of the United States. You know, she seemed to me to be a woman of integrity. That's why I can't believe that she would steal that quote. My <laughs> 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 mom was my hero. I mean, she was my source of strength. I mean, you know, I would go to school and every so often the kids would say something like this. Hey, Roger, <laughs> my daddy can beat up your dad. And I should look at them and say, that's no big deal. My mom can whip him, too. <laughs> 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 my 
My parents taught me about possibility thinking very early in my life. Now, my friends, possibility thinking as I see it means for all of us in this room today, our lives will ultimately be defined by what we choose to dwell on. In other words, do we spend our time and energy focused on the problems of life or the possibilities, the obstacles or the opportunities? So they believed that someday I'd be able to walk and they found an that changed my life. That's a bold statement, but absolutely true. Dr. Robert Weeks, the Shriners Hospital at Chicago, amputated the bottom part of my left leg and reconstructed my knee. So this morning I'm wearing an artificial leg or a prosthesis. You know, when Dean introduced me today and I walked up here, I'm sure there were a few of you that when you saw me for the first time, you thought, hmm, the speaker today during this uh, career and leadership summit kicking off today, wow, you know, he's really faced a, quite a burden. I want you to know I really don't see it that way. In fact, my friends, when I look at my hands, I think they've been a wonderful gift. Because my hands remind me that no matter what circumstances that I might face in my life, it's important that I never quit. Simple as that, never quit. Because my hands remind me that it took me 16 years to learn how to tie my shoes. Yeah. Then somebody invents Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> Let me 